Welcome to my evaluation on the film opening myself and my group produced. Our film is called Anomalous and the narrative involves the protagonist Parker rolling a pair of dice to get a combination of numbers which instruct him to commit deadly crimes. In this video I'm going to show you Anomalous and evaluate the entire process and the final product. The opening begins with our chosen institution Paramount and then our own institution Unprecedented Pictures. This conforms to typical conventions of nearly all film openings and warns the audience that the film is about to start. We also use the transition fade to black between the two to aid continuity. This is also a common technique used in film openings. Our entire opening is based upon a flashback, a typical convention of films. For example, Saving Private Ryan begins with a flashback of the soldier out on the front line and Titanic begins with the helicopter searching the sea. Paramount also distributed both of these hit films. We conveyed a flashback theory through the use of a filter called Bad TV on Final Cut Pro. We also added a white overlay colour which signified having a dream to represent it being in the past. It constructs the narrative and makes the audience feel intrigued. Red is liberally used, for example for the dice, his tie and the blood when the victim gets stabbed. This reveals the semiotics of the colour red being associated with danger and death. Parker himself challenges many conventions in one. Firstly, he subverts Prop's character theory of the protagonist being a hero, instead he is the villain. Secondly, he is aesthetically pleasing, which is unusual for a villainous character. Usually they are unattractive, not well presented and of a lowest class to make the audience dislike them more. I feel this technique deepens the audience's sympathetic feelings for his mental psychotic state of mind. Lastly, he wears a suit which represents him as upper class. We did this because we felt it stressed our film's unique selling point of never being done or seen before. The subversion of many typical code conventions in film results in the viewers being surprised on the edge of their seat and perhaps even urging them to recommend Anomalous to a secondary audience. Doing the preliminary task beforehand really helped us to improve in our final film. For example, practicing the storyboarding really helped us in the sequencing of all the shots, particularly these tunnel shots. It informed us all as a group of what shots we needed to shoot, where, when and how to edit them into Final Cut. It also taught us to make amends of our mistakes. In our preliminary task, we disobeyed that 180 degree rule by mistake. However, while shooting Anomalous, we kept this in mind at all times and ensured we didn't breach the rule once again. We decided upon our BBFC rating of 15 for many reasons. After researching many other horror film age ratings, we found that 15 was the most frequently used. The regulations read that it can include strong violence and strong threat and menace. It also states that the strongest gory images are unlikely to be acceptable, which was fine as we cut away both the razor cutting and the knife stabbing from audience view. Our target audience profile of elder teens from around 16 plus suits Anomalous and appeals to both genders as the narrative is mysterious, complex and unusual, resulting in females also being intrigued rather than just the usual male attraction of horror and gore films. To attract our audience, Reese McAvoy designed a DVD cover for our film, which could be shown on TV advertisements and cinema trailers, which coordinate with large consumers such as Tesco to announce a release date or a special offer. This is our initial engagement with the audience, as this is where they're likely to see it first. 
We also constructed a catchy slogan which is deviating from the normal. This is the definition of the word anomalous. This catchy slogan will stick in the audience's mind and they will recall the film if they hear or read that slogan regularly. Other ways we could attract and advertise to our audience is by film reviews in teen magazines or perhaps on IMDb online. We could produce posters and leaflets to supply in cinemas, libraries, schools, public services such as service stations. But most importantly, we could introduce new media into our advertising methods by communicating with social networks such as Facebook and Twitter for adverts, personal pages and even games. This gives a personal and direct address to our viewers to make them really engage with our media product. From constructing Anomalous, I have learned so much about different technologies and how to use them. It began with Blogger and understanding how to use that, how to use HTML, put it into practice, how to embed things and, for example, when we designed the Favicon, we had to research online how to do that. Uh, we, I started off using Windows Live Movie Maker and then moved on to Final Cut Pro, which is a big step up but really fun to use. Even while creating this evaluation on Final Cut Pro, it really opened my eyes to all the different things you can do to films and ways to edit them. We used After Effects and Photoshop for animations, pictures, logos, fonts and text. And using these I found out a lot more tools and things that I could do with it. We used Apple products like Apple Mac Pros and we used uh, iPhones to record various different videos. I used Jake's Canon DSLR camera when filming and we all took that in turn so we all got a feel of how to film, different ways of how to get focus points etc. Um, we used YouTube to embed certain things onto our blog to upload this evaluation for example and research other film openings. I occasionally used iMovie on my MacBook to experience how to put together sequences of videos on that. Um, I used QuickTime and Cherbit for various different voiceovers such as this one to input into Final Cut Pro and various other recordings that I put onto my blog. I used IMDB, the website online which covers films, to look at different openings and research different genres and things like that. And us as a group, we all used Facebook to communicate. We had a private group uh, set up on Facebook for us all to communicate about when we were next going to meet to do some editing or some filming, as we didn't have media lessons every day. So we needed a way where we would all communicate efficiently and all see notifications daily. This was really helpful because we could also share documents, pictures and thoughts and ideas and it really got things going quicker.